Hey everyone, hope we're all doing well. It's uh, what day is today? November 29th, isn't it? I am thrilled to be here with you writing a blog post live like I do every Sunday. I feel like I've really been getting into my routine now, writing a blog post, seeing you all there. Um, so I got a really interesting piece of feedback recently. My last Write With Me Live, um, I submitted it to uh, PS I Love You. And well, first I submitted it to Hello Love and I never heard back from them. So I was like, all right, I'll put it in PS I Love You. And the editor, Dan Moore was like, hey, I like the concept of this, but first of all, the title's very clickbaity. And second of all, like, why did you write this? Why are you, what's the motivation for writing it? And I realized my motivation for writing it was to get views on Medium, which is, it's a fair, it's a fair desire, but I felt like if you want to do well in Medium, you have to think about the long term, which it's great to want views on Medium, but your primary concern should actually always be giving value to your readers and, and demonstrating why they should be listening or reading your work. So after some thought, I changed it a little bit. I made it more uh, reader centric. I added some more like points about why I was writing this, what had caused me to find that research. Um, and I think it's accepted. It might actually already be published. I'll have a look in a second. Um, but it kind of inspired me to go back and think about my roots in writing and do something that was fun for me, not just to get views, but something that I thought would just be nice to write. Um, I also have to stick to my, um, my, I've got a little like editorial calendar that I work on and, um, tomorrow I'm allowed to publish something fun according to my editorial calendar. So I thought that would be good. Um, all right, I'll go ahead and start. I can, well, first of all, I'll say hi. Hi everyone. Thanks for coming here. Really excited to do this with you. If you're watching a recording, equally nice to have you. Uh, format of this is I write a blog post live. And whenever I lose focus, I stop and take a break and answer some questions from the audience, which is you. So if you've got any questions, go ahead and pop them in the chat at any point. I'll scroll up and down on the comments. Uh, before I go ahead and start, I'll just scroll through. Hi, Dev Anch. Dev Devinch, sorry, I'm probably mispronouncing your name, says he enjoyed the stream last time and learned a lot. So this should be fun as well. I hope so. A couple other people saying hi. How are you doing? Doing well, bad. Thank you. Ewan's here. Uh, Tech wants to know, Tech Mohan wants to know why every time Medium bans your account. Um, I honestly don't know. I, I don't own Medium. I have no idea why they choose to ban or not ban accounts. Um, but if you check out the Medium rules, they've got a pretty long list of uh, policies. And if you're like posting duplicate content, hate speech, harassment, uh, they've got really strict guidelines on cryptocurrency. So I would check out that first. And then if you're still like, why am I getting banned? Email your friends at medium.com and they'll be able to provide a bit more context. Um, Ola wants to, well, Ola says, it's good to see me again and then I'll post my November earnings report soon. Yes, I actually have that scheduled. I don't know if you can see. Uh, that's the 1st of December. I've got my income video scheduled. So hope to see you there. Uh, 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 hi. And and oh, I got an email from you this morning, Anthony, didn't I? Um, and then, baby, oh, oh, there it is. Yeah, so Dan Moore left a note on this. He didn't say clickbaity exactly. It was something like, um, this title isn't really what the article is about. And it was a fair point. I'd written the title to be something like, uh, for science, a relationship is ruined or something. And in fact, it was a story about um, a scientific article. So it was exactly right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and dive in. Business typing fingers, everything's ready. Opening my new tab, medium.com. And sharing my screen, not that one, this one. Don't know why my, why it's going. Well, let's try to look in. Ah, well, while I say hi, I'll just, while it's loading. Okay, it's working now. Nice. I do want to say they did one change recently. They made this button right. And I actually love that because I think it's like a, going back to the focus of Medium, which is to write stories. That's what we're all here for. Um, let's see what's trending on Medium. Recently, Hunter Walk, he did a one about why Substack isn't the answer. I'm interested to see that he's popping up more than once. Um, all right, let's go ahead and stop procrastinating. You know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna press the button that I love, jump right in. 
new draft gosh it's a little daunting looking at that blank page i'm like oh god what on earth am i gonna write here okay something that's fun for me i've been reading a lot lately and it's actually kind of been my lifeline these past few months i'm you guys a lot of you probably know this but um i've been living i've been in a long distance marriage really um i married my partner uh back in january and he's been in the uk and i've been here in the states we did not expect a pandemic to be keeping us apart all these months um and I've had a tough time at work and, and I've now, I'm now having a wonderful time with my freelance business, but it was a tricky transition period, to be honest. And then, of course, let's not underestimate the fact that there has been a global pandemic. And all of this has kind of made me, I used to read a ton, like a lot. And I've kind of been getting back into that this past year. And it's been really nice. It's been one of the things that's been is it too dramatic to say it's been keeping me together? Maybe, maybe a little too dramatic. Okay, it's been it's been a it's been something that's really helped me. We'll say that. Okay, so starting with the title, X. What the heck is happening? Why can I? There we go. X books that let me escape to a fantasy world in 2020. We'll come back to that. It's not an ideal. We'll get there. All right, subtitle. Maybe I can be dramatic in my subtitle. A little dramatic. Well, you know what? We're just gonna start writing and see what happens. Oh no, it does. Uh, mm, that's not right. And I needed it most. Okay. <clears throat> I'd love to know, is anybody else writing? I, I, I love the idea that we're all kind of like in our different areas, everyone writing together, but I don't actually know if anybody, if anybody writes. So if you are writing something, I would love to know what you're working on, the title, where you're hoping to publish it, post in the comments if you like it. Ah, I forgot about the political election. I should probably make a note about that too. Uh, I don't even want to say contested because it wasn't contested. It was dramatic. I want to say something like reading because I've always read I even when I was in college and in my working years I've read but in high school that was when I was like reading 
nonstop. Like I'd read at the dinner table, I'd read on the school bus. I don't know. Well, that's why I put a TK in there because I don't, I don't love how that is. Um, Okay, let's jump into some examples. But before I jump in, I'll go to see if there are any questions. Uh, Ewan asks, how do I make a mailing list for and what can I use it for? I, I did suggest that you make one earlier in an email and then you emailed me back asking this question and I forgot to reply to you. So I'm glad you brought this up now. Um, I use ConvertKit to do this. Um, I, I mean, I can show you real quick uh, how I do this. Medium, uh, what's the recent one I posted in Postgrad Survival Guide? Something about clients, wasn't it? Yeah, here we go. Um, Postgrad Survival Guide is really nice and lets me post my call to action here at the bottom. Um, so I use ConvertKit. ConvertKit lets you create free landing pages as part of their whole thing. So subscribers can click here and then they put in their name, you know, whatever you want here. Um, and then that's it. They're part of my mailing list. I then use this to email people my YouTube links, my stories. I use it to drive traffic to um, new Patreon clients, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so there's really, I really think there's no time too soon to start creating a mailing list, even if it's something like click here to start getting more of my stories or a list of all my stories at the end of each week. Um, cause it's going to start collecting them in these email addresses. And with that, you can start to build real avenues of communication between yourself and your readers, which is always a good thing. Uh, a couple of people. Oh, uh, all I want to know, what is my experience with better marketing? Some big writers say their curated articles get a lot of view after three to four weeks. Better marketing. I have seen the kind of results that they can get. I personally have never got those results. I think that's just because I'm not the right person for better marketing. Um, Sean Kiernan is an example of someone who crushes better marketing. He writes in exactly the right style for them. The audience knows what they want from him and he delivers that. I've seen him get to the top of Medium's popular list many times with better marketing. Um, so yes, it's possible. My personal experience, not that great. I don't know if it's because my writing style doesn't pan out with what better marketing readers want, or if it's just unlucky, wrong place, wrong time. Um, so yeah, I think it's good, but I, I know other writers have had better results than I have. Do, 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 do. Mark asks, if I turn on followers, can subscribe to receive links to your stories via email? Uh, will I still get paid for reading time? So if someone reads the story that you send them, you will get that reading time payment. So yes, I think. I'm not really sure I understand your question. Um, if somebody is, this is just a way for you to send links to people so that they then spend time reading your story so that you get paid. I don't think they get paid. You don't, I don't think you get paid just for like, if they read your email. I think that's the case. Is there a chance for your work to get into a pub without you sending directly? Uh, do pubs handpick your work on their own? Yes, this has happened to me. Um, this typically happens when stories get curated. I know story um, publications like the startup look through the curated list to see um, if things have been curated and aren't currently in publications, then they'll leave a private note saying, hey, we would love to have this in the startup. Um, it's happened to me, most excitingly, I wrote one, um, what was it called? T-shirt box, Zuli. This is the one. So I wrote this, um, it was happening like immediately. So I wrote about it and I just published it without waiting for a publication. And the next day I got an email from the editor of One Zero saying like, hey, I'd love to have this. We'll pay you for it if you put it in the publication. And I was like, oh my God, win, win, yes, please. Um, and you can see it's actually done pretty well for itself. So yes, it does happen. And it does happen to beginners. Your best bet is to get curated. Uh, why don't I use Substack? Good question. Um, mostly because I'm established with ConvertKit and I like it. Um, I also, 
I don't think Substack allows you to segment the same way ConvertKit does. So if I wanted to only send an email to, for example, people who have clicked on my YouTube links, I would be able to do that. I don't know if if I could do that with Substack. And um, I also don't know if it allows, like the way I get people to sign up for my email list is I say, hey, click here, give me your email address and I'll send you uh, a five-day medium starter kit, which I assume that's how many of you came to me. I don't know for sure. Um, I don't know if Substack lets me do that, but main reason is I'm lazy and I already know how ConvertKit works. Okay, back to writing, taking a short break. Do, 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 do. I wonder if she has a medium profile. No, doesn't look like it. Hmm, strengthens isn't quite the right word. It solidifies or stabilizes, that's it.
Okay, let's come back here. F fix that TK I left. Hopefully my mind's been just like thinking about that without me even realizing. Um, so for the first time, I found myself diving head first into, ah, not giving, diving. All right, we're gonna come back to that. I just wanted to put it down before I forget, to the question section. Uh, are private notes the best way to get hold of writers for collaboration? Uh, yes, I don't do this, but I know lots of publications do when they see something that isn't currently in a publication and they think it's a good fit for them. They're like, hey, why don't you put this in my publication? I've already added you as a writer. So they go to the medium topic pages like medium.com forward slash topic forward slash. I don't know, relationship, let's say. Relationships. Um, and then they'll scroll down on this and they'll be like, um, this one, seven ways to improve your relationship. Karen Nimmo, this isn't in a publication. So they'll click on the story and then they'll just be like, hi, Karen, I'd love to have this in my publication. Done. Uh, can I join your Patreon coaching plan? It is currently sold out because I really only have the capacity to do two people at that price. Um, if you want, you can email me, uh, zulirain at gmail.com and we can sort something else out. Um, I'd love to help if I can. Substack, convert kit, <laughs> uh, math Adam. Yeah, so those are ways to grow mailing lists. Um, it is slightly different from a newsletter on your pub because it's external to medium, which is I'm guessing where your publication is. Um, I find it better because if Medium were to go down tomorrow, I would still have access to that list of emails. I regularly export them. So even if ConvertKit went down tomorrow, I would still have access to them. Um, and I find ConvertKit specifically has more flexibility to deal with the kinds of things that I want it to do, like send emails only to specific subsets or, um, like some of the formatting options, tracking link clickages, et cetera. Um, off topic, never. P creating newsletters and email lists is something very near and dear to my heart. Are you asking too many questions? No, I love doing this. Coffee too strong, that's for you to know only. I cannot possibly comment. Um, can you remove a story from a publication and publish it in another one? Comments and claps will still be the same. The comments and claps will still be the same. It's considered a little bit bad form to do this um, among publications. I, I've done it uh, before I kind of knew better and I didn't suffer any bad consequences, but um, I, would, I would make sure you've got a good reason for doing it because otherwise it's just gonna look like you're trying to game the system for some reason. Uh, as Binti has said hello four times, uh, why why am I ignoring you? Because I'm working my way chronologically through the list of questions. Uh, Lady Jade, do I have any tips on how to make a writing part of your routine full-time student? So sometimes it's hard to find time. I can really relate to that. I have been writing since for two years and I've held jobs for most of that time. I know it's not quite the same as being a student because as a student, you can never really switch off. Um, I would recommend not trying to write stories, but just 10 minutes in your day, morning, lunch break, afternoon, just write something. It doesn't have to develop into a full story. It can just be part of something that you work on over a week. I find, and sometimes that 10 minutes will turn into half an hour or an hour if you're really enjoying yourself. I wouldn't force yourself to write whole pieces, but I think if your aim is just to do 10 minutes a day, it's hard to say no to that. And it's a lot easier to work that into part of your routine. Um, all right, I'm gonna try to remove Esbenti because, oh, I can put them in timeout because um, I'm finding their comments a little, a little spooky. Sorry, Benti. Um, okay, back to writing. Hmm. 
I don't know if that Brandon Sanderson is the Brandon Sanderson, so I'm not going to tag them. I would love to know if you guys also, if you if you all recognize either of these authors or books. I know Brandon Sanderson is very well known. I don't know about Genevieve Cochran. How do you spell rhythm? It's like, I always misspell it. Rhythm. That looks right. Didn't want it on my top. and then thoroughly. Rigorously. Thank you. 
I always like doing like a three punch sentence and I'm trying to look for my third punch here. Characters are flawed. Plots are deep. What's another thing I love about him? His books. <sighs> Realistic. I read some books in German this year. I know the author is Kristen Beer, but I can't remember Kristen Beer. Um, name of the books, that's it. Okay, I just wanted to get that down before I forgot about it. And on to the questions. Um, Mark asks, how do you get suggestions in your editor? What do you mean by suggestions? Oh, do you mean like if I mistype something like this? That is Grammarly. Um, I have the free version, highly recommended. It. It's awesome, I love it. Um, I think it even does some autocorrects, I'm not 100% sure, but um, yeah, can't. Can't recommend it highly enough. Saves me a ton of embarrassing typos. Um, clarification on removing the story from the pub. If you believe that your story is underestimated because of the low amount of followers in the pub and you think it can be curated into a bigger one, is that bad? I would recommend in that case, write a new story and try it in a new pub rather than removing an older story. Medium, it you can get spikes in views later on, but most publications, even if even if you were to remove it from one and to put it into one that guaranteed curation, um, you might not get curated because I think Medium only looks at new unpublished stories when they're looking at curation. So if you really think your story was underestimated, I would just write it again, not copy pasting it, but like t another second take on it and put that or try to get that into a, a newer, bigger, potentially better publication. The upshot of this is that you will, um, you have the chance to look at your story again with fresh eyes and um, have a re-edit. Medium is super strict. They do not like duplicate content. Um, so I'm not advising you to duplicate it. Just give it a heavy edit and try again would be my recommendation here. Uh, Veronica asks, do you think that if you start off writing on just one specific thing on Medium, it's harder to transition to something else? Harder in what sense, I would ask. I originally came to Medium writing only about my cats, <laughs> which if you've read any of my recent work, you know isn't what I normally write about now. Um, I found it not too hard to switch. Um, do you mean like you, you worry that you would get stuck in a niche? I don't think you should worry about that at all if that's, if that's what you're asking. Medium's uh, recommendation algorithm is really, really smart. And even if you have like a thousand followers who read your cat stuff, and you publish something in psychology, um, Medium will show your story to people, even people who don't follow you necessarily, if you're a good writer, um, to people who are interested in psychology. So it might be hard to transition and continue with the same level of views, but it's doable and I would say it's worth it. I find it a lot easier to write about multiple subjects on any given day rather than trying to stick to one niche. Hopefully that answered your question, Veronica. If not, feel free to like clarify in the comments what you meant and I'll try to get back to that. Oh, oh my God, I'm so silly. 
you've clarified lower down. Oh, I'm so sorry. I missed that. Um, if your audience is kind of used to, yeah. Okay. So actually I think this does answer your question. The recommendation algorithm should take care of that for you. Um, and honestly, I think on medium, the audience, the readers here, they're more, I think of it like a conversation between friends, right? Like when you talk to your friends, you don't just talk about poetry. That would be a little weird. You talk about all the things that interest you, poetry, um, candles, potted plants, tea. I'm just looking around my room for examples. Um, and they, they don't expect you to just talk about one thing. They're interested in whatever you're interested in. And that's how I think of medium. It's a conversation between friends, not like a lecturer to an audience, if that makes sense. Uh, 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 was I totally new in writing blogging when starting my medium journey? I think I'd started like one or two blogs before then. Um, I posted maybe one blog post in each and uh, received like crickets, <laughs> proverbial crickets in response. Um, so I wasn't totally new, but I was very, very raw. Um, how do I research the topic I want to write in? I normally just kind of play by ear. Like if I'm doing something more scientifically backed or focused, all, um, my favorite secret tip, secret, secret trick is scholar.google.com. Um, I can do stuff like, you can see some of the, some of the stuff I've researched here. Um, so yeah, I'll kind of do it backwards. I'll be like, all right, I want something to prove that mirroring body language is important and I want it published since 2016. And then I'll look at that and I'll read that and I'll be like, okay, great. This backs up my argument and I'll copy. If I can get the whole thing, I'll try to link to the whole thing. But if not, I'll just copy to the, to the abstract and I'll like hyperlink like that. I'm not going to do it because I'll probably forget to take it out. But um, that's normally how I research the topic I want to write about. Do, 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 do. Um, yeah, um, Benamuda, I'm going to ask, please stop posting so many comments because it's making it really hard for me to read the actual comments of people who have questions. Um, so I'm, I'm not trying to delete you up the stream, but if you're going to keep um, posting like this, I will ban you from my channel because I don't want this. Cheers. Uh, let's scroll up. Uh, 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 uh. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna have to put you in timeout again just to read the other comments. Oh my God. Do I think medium is a good medium for serializing fiction? First of all, love the pun. Second of all, um, yes and no. Um, medium is not an audience of fiction readers. It's primarily an audience of people who want nonfiction, self-helpy stuff that's going to help them live their life. That being said, there are two ways you can get around this. First of all, you can publish the whole thing in one long blog post. I've seen people do this not a lot, but it is possible. Secondly, um, if you have an existing audience already, you can serialize stuff. So you can post chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and so on, and just aggressively drive traffic to those posts. You will get paid for them in the same way as the royalty system like this. You won't get a lot of traffic though, because Medium doesn't curate anything that isn't a standalone post and the audience isn't geared towards fiction to begin with. So it's good in that it's super easy to write on Medium, right? Like anybody can hop on here and just start typing away and magic gets posted. Um, it's not great because, well, the audience really isn't there and uh, you, you won't be, your, your posts won't be distributed very far if you're writing non-standalone pieces. Uh, 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 how to earn from blogging. I'm new to blogging and publish your first post in the startup, congratulations. Um, you earn from blogging by getting people to read your stories. You can get people to read your stories by, uh, this is going to sound very reductive, but writing really well and paying attention to creating value in every story you write. So in this story, for example, I'm earning money by A, I built up a, a trust with my existing audience, but B, hopefully people will see this title and be like, yes, I too would like to escape to a fantasy world. Um, and then they read this and this gives them value. The more time they spend reading my post and the more people who read my post, the more money I earn. Uh, 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 if you get rejected from a pub, then try to pitch it to another and continue till you get published. Is that worth it? 
Uh, it depends how much time you're willing to wait. I have a two pub rule. I submit it to two pubs. If no luck, I self publish just because I don't like to wait. I'm very impatient. Uh, uh, um. Best strategy as a newbie to write a lot until you get to 10K subscribers and then write selectively high quality articles. I did this by accident. I would not call it a good strategy because it took me two years to get to this level. Um, I think the better strategy is people like um, Amar, Amar Deep Parmar. I'll see if I can set up, post a link later. He wrote very selectively, like one or two posts a week from the very beginning, but really, really high quality stuff. And he's just absolutely taken off. So he's got to where I am and like, less than a third of the time. Actually, I think he's surpassing me now in terms of earnings. Um, so I would I would actually, if you know how to write well, you don't need to do what I did. I had to write a lot to become a good writer. But if you already know how to write, then I would focus more on writing selectively high quality articles from the very beginning. Hope that answered your question, masked financial hero. Uh, um, how long did it take me to break even on Medium? Um, two months. The first month I earned $3.32. Very fun. Most I've ever been paid for writing <laughs> that first month. And the second month I earned $500. So make of that what you will. How has my monthly payments for Medium changed when I crossed the 10,000 subs? Um, it got a lot bigger. Honestly, when I hit 10K, I don't know if it was hitting 10K or something else. Um, I started going viral more often. And the more viral I went, the more money I earned. So my first viral month, I think, was like, May of this year, and I earned thirty three hundred dollars. Previously, if I'd I'd never broken two thousand dollars before that, so it's not a direct correlation. It's just the more followers you have, the more likely you are to go viral. And viral stories earn like an, so much more money than your non-viral ones. It's not even funny. Did I try Newsbreak? I did. I submitted them to them two weeks ago, and I never heard back. Um, so I might submit again and see what's what. I hear it's a good gig, um, but if not, I'm not too worried about it. Um, has getting followers been linear or do the numbers increase more exponentially eventually? I did notice that I have been getting more followers faster. But for the first, I don't know, five or 10K, it was about 500 every month pretty consistently. Um, to be honest, followers are not the best indication of success. So I don't track that kind of thing too carefully. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, Anthony, Medium is a great landing spot to direct readers to your fiction because it's a good place to build a portfolio. So, I mean, ideally, right, you're going to have an agent stumble across this and be like, wow, I would love to publish this. I don't know how the publishing world works. Hopefully that's right. But in the meantime, you will be earning money through royalties. When Medium members read your stories, your fiction stories, you get money from that. So ideal. Uh Oh, great. Yes. Um, I hired someone to do my profile page on Medium. Um, I paid her a good chunk of money, but I love the way my banner looks. I'm actually going to show it off to you right now because I want to, I just want to brag about it. Oh, no, not that one. Siri.medium.com. I need to update. She's updating my website too. Look at this. How nice does this look? I love it. I'm so happy with the way it turned out. I'm actually going to link her portfolio in this uh, description when I finish because I think it looks really cool. Um, all right, I'm nearly done with questions and then I'll get back. Do I recommend a certain style of writing? I recommend what comes most naturally to you. I, so for example, people like Dan Moore, he writes beautiful, beautiful, elegant, wordy prose. He can do that. I cannot. If I tried to write like that, people wouldn't like what I write because I think it would sound very artificial. Conversely, people like, um, I'm trying to think of a good example. There are some other authors like uh, Shannon Ashley writes very deep, writes very emotionally, writes very vulnerably. That works so well for her. That's her niche. That's her natural voice. And people love that. Um, and then there are some other authors who write more academically. That's their natural voice and the readers gravitate to them. So what I would recommend doing is something that is the closest to the way you talk in real life about these subjects. So I think the most, the closest you can get to your authentic and natural voice, the better you'll do. Uh, 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 um. 
Okay, um, Benamuda, I am afraid I am going to ban you because um, you are spamming the chat and it's super annoying. Okay, but to answer his question, um, he was asking, so I feel kind of bad now because they were asking a fairly relevant question. How much money can you make when a story goes viral? Um, this is my story, the very first story that went viral. Um, and I want to show you exactly how much it earned because I'm still kind of like in shock about it myself. Oh, wow. Okay. $3,800. And what I want to show you is in November, half a year after it's been published, it still earned $36. That's like, it ca It keeps earning year on year on year. Um, it's getting kind of random spikes from Google, I guess. I don't know where that's coming from. Anyway, so like a lot of money from your viral stories. Most of my money comes from stories like this that hit you know, thousands, tens of thousands of views, um, more than the ones that get like 500 or a thousand views. Okay, um, I'm going to launch into my third post. So a break to the writing. Is that a spoiler? Maybe a little bit. Exactly what I want to say.
the synonym for unrealistic? Okay, question time. Where are we? Have I thought about getting help from ghostwriters to help on writing articles? To be honest, masked financial hero, I haven't. Um, maybe I will in the future, but to be honest, I, I love writing. I love doing it myself. Um, I think Tim Denning is a really good example of a, a guy who's building his own entrepreneurial empire on this. Um, so it makes sense for him to try to get as much content, as much good content out in his voice as possible as he starts branching off in different directions. For me, part of the reason I am no longer working at my corporate nine to five is because I love doing this myself full time. I love writing. This is really fun for me. And the thought of giving that up to somebody else, I don't know, it might make financial sense, but I'm not quite ready for it yet. Uh, where do I think my, oh, another question from Mass Financial Hero. Where do I think my earnings will reach in two years time? Is there an upside or do I think I'll plateau at some point? It's really hard to predict. If you told me two years ago that I would be earning, I, I think I earned over $4,000 last month um, on Medium, I would I would have to say like, you're out of your mind. There's no, <laughs> there's no way. I know some people do it, but I never thought I could. So I guess if in two years I'm still making somewhere between three to $4,000 a month on medium, I would be over the moon with that. I would be ecstatic. And that is plateauing kind of at my current level. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know if it'll continue growing. I hope so as more readers come to medium and hopefully find my work, but eh, we'll have to wait and see. Vikas says he started with machine learning and AI to write about, stuff that you are learning, but there's already some posts on the same topic on Medium. What are your suggestions? All right. Um, my favorite realization I ever had about writing is that nothing is original. Nothing you can write is going to be written for the first time. Um, but anything that you write in your voice is the first time that's been written by, by you. What you can write is it will never be original, but it will be unique. And I think that's a really important distinction. So I used to really struggle because every time I thought I had a good idea, I'd be like, Darn it, I bet somebody's already written about this 10,000 times. What makes me special? Why should I bother to write about this? And the truth is it's because nobody can write it like you can. You're the only person who can provide your very unique perspective onto a take. I mean, I'm, I don't know how you write, but I'm assuming if you're a beginner, you're gonna be struggling with some questions that the experts will have forgotten about or won't really have access to because that's your original perspective, your unique perspective rather. Um, so you can say like, I don't know, 
only you can write about posts that like that are like the things I struggled with when I was learning about artificial intelligence or 10 things that confused me when I was learning about machine learning, something like that. Your perspective is absolutely unique. And I think that's something that we can all do better to remember. Uh, you got 550 views. How much will it make according to your experience? I think you might break even on medium. I'm on, I think you might make, I, if I had to guess, I'd say somewhere between seven to $10. We'll see. It depends how long your stories are. Um, gosh. I'm getting some, some late comments. I'm scrolling, but they're kind of coming in. Uh, can I make money writing against feminism on Medium? If you can get people to read that, yeah, absolutely. Um, if you have stuff to write and people are reading your stories, then because of Medium's payment system, you will get money for writing about anything. If it's for feminism, against feminism, whatever you like. Um, I've read that Medium nowadays has a decrease in views. Do you agree? I don't want to veer too much into a conspiracy theory here. Okay. So, but I'm about to, so bear with me. Um, I personally have been getting a lot less views the past two months and about two months ago, there was a change in the algorithm. Views don't just disappear though. So there, there are two theories here. First of all, the algorithms changed. Medium could be focusing on promoting newer authors or promoting authors who are writing about topics that I don't write about. So that would cause me to get a decrease in views while the views in Medium overall are staying about the same. It could also be in November, I don't know if you uh, realize, but there was a lot of other stuff going on, uh, like a lot. And it could be that people just weren't reading on Medium as much. So that would cause a decrease, like a blanket decrease in views overall. Um, so one of the things I like least about writing on Medium is that I can never predict how many people are going to read my stories or get my get access to my content. Um, so it could be that the algorithm doesn't favor me anymore and that I'm not going to earn a lot of money and that this is the beginning of a huge downhill slope. Um, but this is not the first time this has happened on Medium. This is the third or fourth, at least, since I've been writing two years ago. Every so often, there is an inexplicable dip. Views go down. Earnings go down. People, including me, start to panic and think, oh my gosh, the gravy train is over. I'm going to be unemployed and living with my parents. I already live with my parents, so joke's on me, I guess. Um, but every time before, it's picked back up again. I don't know if that's going to happen this time, but that's all I can hope for. Uh, when was the first time? January 2019. Uh, views cut in half for almost everyone I spoke to and money cut in half also. Um, and then people were like, oh my God, it's the end. And then, you know, things pick back up and <laughs> um, what topic should a beginner write about in order to go get your posts to go viral? Siraj, if I knew the answer to this question, I would have many more viral posts than I already do. What I would recommend to you specifically, um, write a, pick a topic that you like about. So go to medium.com forward slash topic, topics. This gives you a list of all the stories that get curated on Medium. Pick one or two or 10 that you personally enjoy writing about uh, podcasts, as an example. And um, look at the popular in podcast section. This is what's going viral in the podcasting area. What's going on here? You know, what's happening? What are these titles telling you? Those are the kinds of titles that can give you ideas to start going viral. Um, I find that's an easier approach than looking at topics. Um, I found that if I stop publishing the recurring number of views, I normally get drops. Do you also feel you have to constantly feed the medium beast? Yes, but less and less. The more you write, the more you'll get those residual views. So like um, if I go to my stats right now, Oh gosh, it's been a bad day for me. It's very few views. <laughs> um, let's let's look at an older story. Look at this one. All right, I published this in August, and in November, I'm still getting a lot of views. Admittedly, a lot of them are external, but I'm still getting a lot of views. 
the more stories you have like this that get like a pretty consistent flow. I mean, look at that, 300 views a day for the past month have come from this story, even though I wrote it months and months ago. Um, you only need a couple like that to start going and then you need to feed the beast to use your phrasing less and less often. Ruth asks, what are my tips on finding clients for freelance writing? Uh, I actually wrote a post about this not too long ago, so I would direct you there. I will post this in the comment section because I think it will help. How fast is your writing speed and does it matter long term? Uh, mine's pretty quick, uh, although I have a very atypical, I write with just like these five fingers. <laughs> um, the faster your writing speed is, I think the faster you can get your thoughts onto the proverbial paper and that will help your writing. But if you're a slow writer, I know Michael Thompson, for example, takes like weeks to write his stories, but they come out really good, really sharp because they've been through a really sharp mind in order to finally arrive on the page. Um, so no, I would say it does not matter long term. Uh, is it better to focus on a niche or multiple niches? I personally focus on multiple niches. I have my little editorial calendar that I try to stick to. Um, I've got like five or six rotating topics that I talk about because after two years, I found those are the ones that work best for me, that get me the most views overall. Um, if you find that you're only getting views about one specific topic and you only care about making money, then I would say focus on that one topic. Um, but before you do that, I would try to write in as many things that interest you and work out what you enjoy writing about and what your audience resonates with. Uh, when curated, will I still get monetized even if I don't have Stripe? Monetization and curation actually are completely unrelated. The money only comes from reads. So let's say something isn't curated, but I send it out to my newsletter and a thousand people read it. If they're media members, I will get paid. So that's the first question I want to answer. Curation helps because it shows it to more people, but it's just, it's the vehicle. It's not, it's not how you get paid. Um, but no, if you don't have Stripe, that's the only way Medium has to pay you. So you do need a Stripe account. If decrease doesn't stop, what is my plan B? Um, luckily, writing is maybe not the oldest profession, maybe the second oldest profession. Writing's always been around. Writing is a valuable, valuable skill. Um, and I have two years experience with it with a very rich portfolio. So worst case scenario, I, I love writing on Medium. I hope I never have to leave. But worst case scenario, I'll go on LinkedIn and I will get a job writing or I'll get freelance clients writing. I have a lot of different streams of income now. And now that I found out that writing is what I really love to do, although I love doing it on Medium, I can do it anywhere. Uh, last question, and then I'll keep focusing on my point number four. Given the unpredictability of medium earnings, what gave me the confidence to leave my nine to 12? Nine to 12. Nine to 12. That doesn't make sense for me. I feel like I'm being silly, though. I'm Anyway, I left my job when I started getting freelance clients. Um, I made a couple thousand from my freelance client, I think in September. And then in October, I was like, all right, I just had a really good medium month. Now's the time. And I'm living at home with my parents. I have no expenses. Like it was the best, least risky time to try to build something. So here I am, I invested in a camera. I've got a microphone. I'm doing my YouTube lives more regularly. I'm posting more videos. I'm writing better articles. And I have the time, energy and inclination to really to pursue this freelance project with my whole heart. The confidence came from having freelance clients external to Medium that I could begin to rely on. Uh, freshman in college, looking to hone your writing skills, Clem. Do you, I think it's too early to start writing on Medium? No. Um, I don't know if Ewan is still here. He was in a comment section earlier. He's actually younger. I think he, he emailed me and he said he was like 14 or 15, I want to say. Um, I don't think it's ever too soon to start writing on Medium. Um, the worst that can happen is that you're not good at writing. And as you write more on Medium, that will stop. You will be better at writing just through the sheer pressure of writing. Um, but it's also a really good chance not just to build a portfolio, not just to sharpen your writing skills, but to start getting a sense of what you enjoy writing about, whether writing is a viable career option for you. Um, and I think there's really, there's no sooner... There's no too early to do that, in my opinion. So 
Uh, all right, I see some more questions coming in, but I'm going to focus on writing point number four, The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. Has anybody read The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison? I honestly, oh God, it was so good. It, it shakes me to my core, it was so amazing. All right. All right, number five. And on to the questions. Have I looked at Vocal? I think that's one of those like medium platforms. I haven't looked at it to answer your question. Vocal plus. Oops, that's not how you do it. Um, 
should check it out. I'll add it to my to-do list. Um, are there courses by popular medium writers? What's special in them? Are they worth it? I actually haven't paid for any myself. I did take part of Tom Kubler's course way back when. Um, I found it really useful. I don't know how much he charges for it, but if I think he does offer like a money back guarantee. Tom Kubler, I'll, I'll post his name. Actually, I'll, I'll just show you right now. Uh, Tom Kubler medium course. And he's also super responsive. Oh, look, there are a couple people who have taken it. So you can probably check that out and they'll give you a better answer um, than I can because I didn't actually pay for it. Uh, but yeah, I, I would I would check out his course first. Um, first of all, because there are some good reviews. And second of all, I know Tom, he's super responsive. He's very genuine and very upfront. So I that's where I would start if I were you. But I don't have I haven't actually seen any others even. So I can't speak with a lot of experience there. Uh, um. I've gone into a few large publications like Postgrad Survival and the Startup. Should I be trying to write more or a better quality? If you're into those publications, then every story you write has the potential to go viral. Quality will help more than quantity, but there is an element of luck to medium where the more you write, the more chances you have of going viral just because you're throwing more stuff at a wall. Um, so I would I would focus more on quality, but some on quantity. Uh, Veronica has some advice for people asking about not having Stripe. If you're from a country that Stripe isn't supported, TransferWise is her recommendation. Where did I find my first freelance clients? I'm also looking to leave my nine to five within the next year and have loved all of my advice so far. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, my first client came to me through networking. I am a little ashamed to admit it. I did not get my first client myself. Um, I don't know if you remember a while back, I interviewed this guy called Peyton. He does brand journalism. He charges like $1,500 per story. Um, anyway, somebody came to him and they were like, we would love to hire you. And he was like, you know, I'm not the right person for this, but I can put you in touch with someone who might be. That person was me. Um, and they're, they're a really good paying client for me. That was my first one. The ones who came after that, I didn't find them. They found me. I posted stuff on Medium and they read it and they were like, I would love to hire you to write something like this for me. And that's where most of them come from today. Uh, how does writing programming articles fare for making money on Medium? I get this question a lot. How does X topic do for making money on Medium? And I find all topics are very good for making money on Medium. It just depends how you write about them. I have found, for example, that writing about writing is not a very good money maker for me, but other people who write about writing find that it is a tremendous money maker for them. My theory is that I don't write in a way that appeals to rare writers, or sorry, rare readers of writing on Medium. So I don't make a lot of money from that. Um, people like Nick Goka, for example, when he publishes something about writing, you're like, dang, I better check that out. The guy's amazing, boom. So he gets a lot of money from writing about writing. For writing about programming, I would say if you have any kind of insight, if you have any kind of experience, if you have the willingness to do your research and your legwork and cite your sources and tutorial type articles, um, there is a huge audience of programmers on Medium and you have the potential to earn a lot of money for making money there with those articles. All right. Is it against the medium guidelines if you use the content of your medium article and turn it into an informational video on YouTube? No, I don't think it is. I have not closely studied the medium guidelines. So possibly it is, but I, I can't see why it would be. I think you own that content, basically. It's yours. You have full rights to it. So they can't, I don't see how that would be any bad thing. Do, 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 do. All right.
All right, number six is gonna have to be, what have I read? I read recently. I read another one by N.K. Jemisin, um, The City We Became. Again, very gripping, very vivid, but I don't wanna have two by N.K. Jemisin. What's another one I read? I might have to go, I might have to go look at my bookshelf. Talk amongst yourselves, I'll be right back. Where was I? Oh yes, getting my book. I know it's by Kenneth Lee. Power, that's it. I've written charming like way too many times in here. Oh no, just once. I've wanted to write charming way too many times in here. Charming synonym. I should just get a, a thesaurus, shouldn't I? <sighs> Ambrosial. 
No, I'm gonna go for appealing. Uh, appealing isn't strong enough. I, I love this book because it was so good for making me, it, That's what I wanted to say. On to the questions. Brittany asks, um, do I have any tips for maximizing productivity and overcoming writer's block? Um, I do have a couple, but take these with a pinch of salt because they work for me and they might not necessarily work for anybody else. First of all, I don't, unless I'm doing this kind of thing, like where I'm writing a post with you, I try not to focus on writing a single post. Instead, I write about, or just write for like, I aim to write for five or 10 minutes every day. It's hard to tell yourself no when you're just asking yourself to write for five minutes. So, and I don't even have to write about anything specific. Like I've got my editorial calendar that I stick to, but there's enough wiggle room in there that I can pick anything in there to write about. And just, just try for five minutes. Normally what happens is that five minutes will turn into 30 or an hour of writing. But it, it takes me, when I don't feel like writing, forcing myself to just write for five minutes is one of the things that helps because it kind of gets the juices flowing again. Secondly, um, sometimes the writer's block is there for a reason. It's because you don't have anything good to write. This has happened to me a lot. Um, sometimes I just go through droughts where I don't have anything that needs to be said at this moment. And that's okay, it doesn't need to. It can just, you know, it can live out there. I can I can just not write for a couple days or a couple weeks and the world won't end. For maximizing productivity, um, I try, I have this extension called the Forest Extension. I also have it as an app on my phone. It stops me from opening new tabs that are going to like Facebook or um, like Instagram or anything like that. Uh, and that helps me keep focused. It's kind of like the Pomodoro technique, if you're familiar with it. Um, just, I'm prone to, to distractions, and the more I can minimize that, the more productive I am. Um, and I also, I try to think more long term. Like, yes, I can spend all day reading books, as I say that I have done here when I should be writing. Um, but if I say, okay, I'm just going to aim to have three stories written this week, um, I find that's easier than saying, okay, I have to write one story every day or like I have to write for an hour every day or anything like that because I have a, a more clearer view of the trade-off, right? So like, I'm like, okay, yeah, I could ignore my duties and just spend all day Instagram scrolling, but that means that tomorrow I will have to do more work. That's what helps me. I don't know if that was helpful for you. Hopefully it was a little bit. Uh, Dr. Strange wants to know if I'm trans. I'm not, I am cisgendered. All right. <laughs> Peter's doing something similar. Uh, writing with interruptions from the family. Got a lot of respect for you. I don't know if I could do that. I, whenever I write downstairs, I always have my headphones on to like signal that I'm not to be interrupted. I find this easier to do because I've got it all on one screen. <sighs> okay, where are we? Number six. Oh no, I was working on number six. I think I don't know why. Maybe it's because whenever I write listicles, I try to avoid seven as my number because I think um, the seven habits of highly effective people is like the archetypal listicle, really. And it's very hard to live up to that. So I always avoid the number seven. You'll see that I, I always do like six or four or eight or something. I never do seven. I know, I do want to come back to that. Okay.
All right, on to my conclusion. I am I am leaning a little over dramatic here. I'm gonna bring it back down to earth. All right, I don't really know how I'm gonna end this yet. So I'm gonna do two things. First of all, I lied a little bit at the start. Part of the reason I wrote this book um, was because I did see that Amar recently had a story that did really well and it was about books. Uh, where are we? This one, this one did really, really well. Um, and I was like, okay, maybe I'll try writing about books and see what happens. I mean, I love, I don't think mine's gonna do anywhere near as well as this one did because like, as I said, the market for fiction readers on Medium is not super big. Whereas business readers, there's a lot of them on Medium. Um, <laughs> I loved how he did his MRD Parmar score. Um, let's see how he finished this. Hmm, he didn't really give it a conclusion. Fascinating. Hmm. I do like how he made this. All right, so that doesn't actually help me much. I was hoping I could sort of borrow from him. OK, 
Okay, so the second thing I was going to do is read the whole thing aloud. If you are new to these, um, don't be alarmed. I do this every time. I This is something that helps me pick out inconsistencies, typos that slip through the Grammarly net. Um, it helps me just make sure it's all about a good logical structural flow. If you don't do this, I recommend you do. But before I do that, I'm just going to make sure I didn't miss any comments. Um, I did. <laughs> it was a very weird commenter um, who I thought was going to be cool, but they were not cool. So I've blocked them. Uh, looks like a couple comments are just about that. Um, thanks for inspiring me to become a writer. LS, I'm so glad I have been able to do that. I love writing. And I, I, I know this sounds so cliche and corny, but I really, really, really believe that if anybody who felt like they had something to say and that they wanted to do it in writing, if everybody who felt like that actually wrote something and shared their feelings and thoughts and hypotheses, then the world would be a better place. Okay, corny moment over. Um, isn't this post a bit too subjective? Yeah, this is super subjective, which is why I've, I've tried to, uh, like, these are books, this is a, a list of my book recommendations. Um, I'm not trying to pretend that these are like the best 10 books in the world. These are just um, books that I liked and helped me forget that I was living in the year 2020. And that was nice for me. And anybody else who wants to do that, I recommend this list to them. Um, I hope that answered your question, Devansh. Uh, I'm going to want to know what's my experience do people read more technical blogs or fictional blogs? I would say people read more technical blogs here on Medium. It got its start being a really, really heavily technical publication. Like Medium was mostly tech stories back like four years ago, um, which is why I never came on here. It was only when I saw people like Shannon Ashley. If you don't know her, I recommend you check her out. She writes very personal stories, very opinionated stories, very honest stories. And yeah, she, when I saw, saw her writing, not just writing, but doing really well writing, I was like, okay, all right, I can do this. And that's kind of what gave me my start. Okay, I think I'm caught up with comments. So now I will be reading the whole thing, then I'll pick out a picture. Then I'll work on my title and then I will submit to a publication to be determined. Six books that let me escape to a fantasy world in 2020 TK. That just means I'm going to come back and sort out the title. These books offered me a lifeboat when I needed it most. Um, again, I don't love that subtitle. I think it's a little over dramatic. Suffice to say, 2020 was a difficult year for just about everyone. I was better placed than a lot of folks, already working remotely, living with my parents. But even so, I struggled. I'm in a long distance marriage. I transitioned from a corporate job to freelance work. There was a dramatic election cycle. And of course, there's an ongoing global pandemic. When rea whenever reality got to be too much for me, I found a great deal of comfort diving into books. TV shows also have their place, but for me, it's too easy to watch TV and scroll through Twitter or Instagram, or get distracted in other ways. Uh, does that sound like a euphemism? I don't want to imply anything. I'm just like, TV wasn't engaging enough for me to lose myself the way I so desperately craved. And so for the first time since high school, Oh, I, I can't have diving twice in the same pair. See, this is why you should always read aloud because you see you, you like said diving twice in the same paragraph. And so for the first time since high school, I found myself jumping. I don't want, I just don't want to say diving. Yeah, that makes sense. I found myself staying up all night reading books again. In the hopes of sharing these lifelines to anyone else who needs them, here are the books that let me, momentarily at least, forget who, where, and when I was. Number one, The Invisible Library Library by Genevieve Cogman. What better book for a book lover than a book about a protagonist who is a book thief from a mysterious library? Genevieve Cogman crafted a series that follows Irene, a no-nonsense agent for a mystical library whose role in the universe is to collect books from alternate worlds. This book thievery stabilizes the world from two opposing forces in this universe, which are order and chaos. 
the forces rep the, the forces are represented by dragons and the fae respectively. I love this series because it's well thought out, rich and unique. The idea of alternate universes is not new, but the idea of stealing unique books from those alternate universes, uh, alternate worlds to keep them stable against their iconic and fey interference is, not to mention the protagonist is symp sensible, sympathetic, and super relatable. Another point in its favor is that the Invisible Library is the first of six and soon to be seven books. I read somewhere that's something you should do. If it's less than 10, you write it out. And if it's more than 10, you just put the number. These action-packed books are creepy enough to grip me, but not so spooky I actually get scared. They're an ideal read for an afternoon with a cup of tea and a slice of cake. Number two, The Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. If you want a book that is so rich in detail and hair raising, and hair raising, it's not hair raising suspense exactly. And gripping action that you will literally be on the edge of your seat. I'm not even exaggerating. When I was reading this, I was like so tense. I was like, what's gonna happen next? Um, look no further than Brandon Sanderson. The Stormlight Archive is an epic fantasy in the truest sense of the phrase, a 10-part series that features books over 1,000 pages long, taking place in Sanderson's Cosmere, which is a universe with multiple worlds, cultures, languages, and magic systems. What I love most about Sanderson's work is that it makes sense in a way not many magic books do. His laws that govern the use of the local magic systems on any of his planets are all underpinned by a single, comprehensive, and logical system. What this means is that you read more and uncover more detail. Previous details from earlier in the series make sense. It's like a little inside joke between you and... and your pal Brandon. <laughs> uh, every time you realize you've solved a mystery that's been bothering you for three books. This year, in anticipation of Rhythm of War being released, I reread all three previous books for the third time and even then found new details, details I hadn't noticed the first or second times. This precision, it's not precision, this type of detail layering is part of what let me lose myself so rigorously in his worlds. His characters are flawed, his plots are deep, and his worldly, well, his world building is unbelievably believable. I kind of like that turn of phrase. I'm a little proud of that. He's the kind of author that makes you feel like he's describing a real world and real events rather than rather than making the whole thing up. Number three. All right, I'm going to try to do my German accent for this. Ruben Roth by Kerstin Gier. As someone who speaks Spanish and German and wants to retain her language skills, I made it a New Year's resolution to read at least one book in German and one book in Spanish in 2020. Kerstin Gier's Ruben Roth Ruben Roth made that not only possible, but easier than I could have dreamed. It may be geared towards the YA crowd as the protagonist is 16 years old, but I've always loved YA and this book was no exception. It's an absolutely charming romp through time as the chronically underestimated heroine, Gwen, finds unexpectedly finds out she has inherited a time-traveling gene and uncovers a dastardly plot of world domination. Chaos naturally ensues. The book series had one of my all-time favorite literary elements, the slow burn enemies to lovers path. I felt like I was a teenager myself again, as Gwen inevitably fell in inconvenient love with the handsome hero. The real highlight of this book series is how realistic the characters are. There are no miscommunication plot holes, no clunky dialogue, no improbable fairy godmothers. It was good enough to keep me up for nights at a time reading a teenage love story, time travel tale in my rusty German, and to immediately buy the second and third books in the series. Number four, should I, I'm just worried because it's the fifth and I feel weird that it's like my number, no, I'm just gonna leave it, whatever. Number four, The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. I consciously steered away from dystopian fiction this year because reality was looking too much like that genre for my tastes. But The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin was so intriguing and otherworldly that it made the cut. The truly incredible thing about Jemisin's The Fifth Season, I need to italicize this about one. was how she manages mm, managed to tap into the perfect duality into okay now into the duality of a perfect plot twist it's completely unexpected when it comes but also utterly inevitable when you get there do you know what i mean like when you get to a when you get to a plot twist and you're at the same time like shocked and really caught off guard but then you're like wait a minute 
there's no other way this could have ended. I don't know. Let's, I hope you know what I mean. Upon further rereads, you won't understand how you missed it while still picking up while simultaneously picking up more and more details that lead you to her ultimate conclusion. Plus, there are more than I'm worried my grammar's not right there. There are more than one plot twists. There are, I'm just gonna say there are multiple plot twists. Multiple plot twists, so you can experience it over and over again. Her world building is dark. It's brutal and grim with death, mutilation, and horror, but it's also very human. She masterfully touches on so many aspects of humanity with both heart and accuracy. It's so easy to let yourself be carried away by her prose and her story. Number five, The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I came across this book as I typed best rom-com book into Google. I wanted something with the casual and simple joy of a Hallmark movie, but with richer detail and better build, ugh, better quality world building. The Hating Game did not disappoint. It's the exception on my list for being set here on planet Earth, but I can't overstate how much it let me escape this planet and onto one where two co-workers who are polar opposites and who hate each other could who loathe each other could potentially just maybe fall into a deep and abiding love. No spoilers, that's on the back of the book. The dialogue was so sharp and witty, it really revitalized the rom-com genre of writing and let me feel like I was right there with the protagonists. It is also exceptional on my list for being the only book I read in a single sitting. The Hating Game arrived on a Saturday afternoon. I picked it up Sunday morning and set it down Sunday evening, finished in its entirety. I passed it on to my sister who gave it back to me on Monday morning, also fully read. It's lighter than a lot of the books on its list and it's written so vividly that you'll forget you're actually turning pages. If you want to live in a lighter, happier, fluffier world for 300 odd pages, you can't do better than The Hating Game. Number six. Wolf Tower by Tanith Lee. Wolf Tower is a book that sat on my bookshelves for about 15 years. I must have read it when I was 10 or 11, then put it back on the shelves to gather dust. When I moved back home last year, I picked it up again. I rediscovered it and found myself transported. I already said effortlessly. Effortlessly transported to Clady's Wolf Tower escaping with a notorious heroine. I found myself effortlessly transported to the heroine Clady's wolf tower, escaping with a notorious and unreliable rogue, falling in love with a different notorious and unreliable rogue, battling against the forces of law and evil and chasing it happily ever after. What I like most about Lee's Wolf Tower is that it's written real it's realistically written it's written in a realistic journal format. Many journal-esque fiction books never really acknowledge how improbable it is that the journal will be written by the fictional character then somehow recuperated and read by us, the reader. Lee addresses that directly and has her heroine Clady write for what she thinks is an invisible audience. It let me fully suspend my disbelief and fall headfirst into the world in a way not a, other, not a lot of other journal fiction books can. It's a fun, fast-paced read that stands on its own, but also has another three equally fun books in the series if you want to continue the journey. Again, I found the heroine a big sell. Clady is whimsical, down-to-earth, silly, and lovable. I found her journals to be a wonderful diversion from reality. On to our conclusion. The amazing thing about books is that there are more incredible reads in the world than I'll ever have time to get to with more coming out every year. As I found my grown-up years to be more turbulent than my younger self could have ever expected, I have taken refuge in some truly delightful books that have let me pretend, even if just for hours or days, that I'm anywhere else. Unlike most other forms of destruction, I find books to be immersive. I can't check Twitter, I can't browse Instagram, and I can't spend my mental energy contemplating how everything seems to be getting worse somehow. My biggest obstacle is finding books I know will be good. I hope that this list will help just one other reader accomplish what I managed to do and spend a couple hours ha happily somewhere else. I actually like how that ends. I'm gonna leave that. Okay, I do wanna work on my title first. Six books that will distract you from 2020.
Six fiction books that will distract you from 2020. I don't love it. Okay, I do this. This is my, I don't wanna call it a hack because it's not a hack. It's like a little, a tip from me to you. This is a tip. Um, whenever I can't think of what my title should be and I kind of want it to be verging on clickbaity, um, I go to the topic that I'm aiming to get curated into and I check the popular in books. Oh, look, there's Amars, the 20 best business books. Nice. Seven life-changing books you can devour in a single day. Okay. Um, so the ones that I'm interested in are probably these two because these are the ones that are book lists. So six fantastic fiction books that will distract you from... I don't mind. All right, I'm gonna come back to that again. Um, in the meantime, I'm gonna go pick out a picture. What I like to do when I'm picking out a picture is I do that, I make sure my orientation is horizontal because that's just what it should look like. Um, and then one of the biggest issues on Medium is that a lot of the images on these places are just very overused. Um, so I, when I find one I like, I make sure that it has under a million views. And that's just one way uh, that can sort of help you not do something that's over already been seen a thousand times. I'm also trying to do right now is see if I can somehow get this ranked on Google. That would be a really ideal outcome. Best fiction books would be really good. This is a little wordier, but I feel like this is this gets more to the heart of the article too. Like I'm talking about 2020 was a tough year and I used to love reading. Reading used to be my lifeboat, um, but I kind of lost it and then we're back. And get back into reading, I think might have a not terrible chance of ranking on Google. So if you're new to Medium, I'll tell you right now, Medium has a super high domain authority. What this means is if you write something on Medium and publish it, it has a higher than average chance of ranking on Google or Bing or Ask Jeeves or whatever, just because Medium is a highly ranked domain authority. So if you write it on WordPress versus Medium, the same blog post, it's gonna do better on Medium. That. All right, let's 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 see. And then books. Okay.
The reason I keep going to my preview page is I want to see, this is what somebody will see when my story hopefully is recommended to them. Um, they look at this and they're like, if you were a reader, would you click on this? I really like this image because it's kind of conveying like a little bit of a, she's escaping. She's getting out of here. That's kind of what I'm getting from that image. But I'm actually, I'm not convinced. I'm going to go back to Pexels and have another look just to see what's eye-catching. No, you know what? I actually like what I've got. Okay, so now we're in the tag part, books reading. Let's go back to the topics page on Medium and see what else this could be. Fiction. Culture? Sure, why not? Uh, and friendly self. Self is a solid bet. Why not? Um, okay. And I actually think I'm going to try to get this into Mind Cafe. I publish a lot in Mind Cafe. Uh, with good reason, a lot of my like top, most amazing viral stories are published in Mind Cafe. Um, but I just want to make sure. Yeah, I think. I think Mind Cafe is the best place for this. I like writing for The Ascent, um, but the reason I don't do it anymore is because they make me wait like a week and your girl does not like to wait a week. So we're gonna submit. Okay. And we did it. We wrote a blog post, y'all. Pretty good, huh? I thought that was fun. I. I like that. Okay, um, I'm going to hop into the question section and then I'm going to go have some lunch because I'm never hungry before I do this, but then I'm always very hungry after I do it. So if you have any questions, please pop them in the chat now or else uh, you'll have to wait until next Sunday. So uh, 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 uh. Peter, writing a tech story. That sounds fun. Um, Nikki, oh, congrats. Getting accepted into Curious is awesome. They have a ton of followers. Quick little hack for anybody who doesn't know to see how many followers a publication has, um, you just go to backslash latest. 27,000 followers, that's awesome. That's really cool. Um, Peter's got some, oh, I just submitted it. I guess it's not too late. We'll go see. I think, uh, I, think I ended up changing the subtitle anyway. Um, your first blog post got selected by startup. That's really good to hear. That means that hopefully you got curated, it sounds like, and somebody else recognizes the quality of your work. That's awesome. Uh, 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 uh. Ebru letting me know the photo was good. Glad to hear it. I doubt myself a lot on the photos. I'm like, oh, is it, is it good? Is it not good? I just don't know. Um, am I considering publishing before in 21 content for the new year? Yes, I am casual nerd Jason. I am. I don't know what yet, but I think in December I'm going to have at least two. I will probably do one about Medium. Um, my most popular YouTube video was like how to make money on Medium in 2020. So I might do like a recap of that. I'll do a video and a, and a blog post for that. And then I'll probably do like a self improvementy one, like four skills to pick up to make it your best 2021, something like that. I, I think that might do well. Um, is it free to submit on Medium publications? Do you have to start a relationship with them first? No, the great thing about Medium publications is that for the most part, it's a meritocracy. A lot of them, um, it's, you you just, they don't look at your previous work. They only look at the stories that you put in front of them on that day. So you submit, if I submit, mind, I just submitted that story to Mind Cafe. Anybody could have submitted that story to Mind Cafe. And um they're not going to look at what I've written previously. They're only going to look at what I what I just submitted to them. Some people um, will look at some publications do look at previous posts, but most 
don't. Um, so it is free to submit and you do not have to start a relationship with them. And I think that is the last question. So um, if you, let me get rid of this. Thank you so much for doing this with me. I the, one of the best things about doing this full time is I can I can do this now with you, and it's super fun. I love doing it every Sunday. If you've got any questions that I didn't get to, please feel free to post them in the comments. I go through my YouTube comments once a week, and I think tomorrow is the day, so you might get an answer tomorrow. Um, any other questions? Feel free to email me zuliereign at gmail.com. Um, I also try to go through those about once a week. And if you wrote your own story, I would love to read it. I love the idea of us all writing here together. So if you wrote something and it gets published, let me know. I'd love to have a, I'd love to see it and, and see what else is, is up to. And um, oh, one thing I did want to say is that I'm always looking for like fun challenges. So if you can think of any, any challenges that you think would be fun to have me write, like picking a random topic or anything like that. Uh, let me know in the comments section also, I guess, uh, or any, you know, you can send it to me via messenger pigeon if you want. But anyway, you can send it to me. I would love to check it out. And without further ado, happy Sunday. Happy writing. Thank you for doing this with me. And I will see you all. Um, I think I'm actually going live next, next Friday. So I'll see you on Friday. And